teaching to address a certain individual that has been causing sin, hell, and the devil throughout the internet. He's just like all these other ones that I've seen before. And now this was sent to me by my pastor, Charles Dow. And this wolf in hyena jackal's clothing, vocab alone, is out there doing what they all do. These men that aren't set sent by the Most High Yah to be a master builder, they build on the work of another. And he admits in these videos that he does that he goes and seeks out these people that profess to be, could be called Hebrew Israelite teachers. Now, I don't know any of these other teachers. I know Pastor Charles Dow and Straightway Truth Ministries of who I'm a part of. But he, he goes out and he builds upon their ministries by using their face, using their websites, using their names in order to get his name put out into the forefront. And that's all he does is try to go and just be a leech and a gnat and a parasite upon all these people. Whether you agree with their doctrine or not, why don't you get a life if you think you're so anointed and preach out of this instead of going and preaching off what everybody else is talking about. But when I see you out there talking, I don't hear hardly a scripture come out of your mouth that makes any sense to me. And here's what I heard in this video, talking about the Hebrew Israelites that are coming up to the truth of their heritage and realize this is their book. This is written about their family. You can easily see it from beginning to end that this is about one people, one people. He says that the Hebrew Israelite movement is leeching off the Christian church. Isn't that the biggest, most hypocritical comment you've ever heard in your entire life? Christians have done nothing but leech off the heritage of another people. They, they practice replacement theology and put themselves as the people of the book. Yahweh has a people that he was sent to. And it's the lost sheep of the house of Israel, his firstborn son. That's who Yeshua was sent to. I'm, I am not sorry to tell you that Abraham, the father of the faith, was not a Christian. He was a Hebrew. I am in no way apologetic to tell you that his son Isaac also was a Hebrew. And I am no way going to tiptoe around the fact that Jacob, Jacob was a Hebrew whose name was changed to Israel as one that struggles with Yah and overcomes, who gave birth through a polygynous marriage to the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. Now, what are you going to do about that? And you have Judah, one of his sons, who Jesus Christ came through. And Yeshua, who never even heard of the practices of Christianity, never preached any doctrines or principles or customs that comprised and made a religion called Christianity that was supposed to bear up his name. And none of his disciples preached such a religion. Paul, the apostle Saul, never talked about this faith. In fact, he was proud of the fact that he was a Hebrew of the tribe of Benjamin. Paul, Paul plainly upheld the law. He was keeping the feast days. You see it in Acts. You see James saying, go down and participate in this Nazarite vow to show them that you do not preach against the Torah. Also going over into 1 Corinthians, he's telling you to keep the Passover feast. He's giving you instructions on how to do it and that Yeshua is your Passover lamb. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Racha HaKwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders, elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors also to you, brother, and you followers of the truth, and Shalom to the elect. Anyway, um, the brother, I'm just going to do a quick response. Uh, I, didn't, I just now got a chance to check it out, so I said, before it leaves me, I'll go ahead and do the video of this. Uh, the brother sent it to me, uh, and this actually was on Deacon Haka channel, the Sakari camp. Let me see. Um, Sakari SGT or something like that. Um, so it was on their channel, and I looked at it. And a lot of the things this guy is saying on here, right, is absolutely true, which we've been saying. That this uh, man, Vocab Malone, what he does, um, anybody who falls out or who knows, some of these people could have been agents already in the camp. And then when it was time for them to uh, do their duty as an agent, then they come, you know, relinquish their position 
and then come sit down with vocab on a panel. Now there's also, I believe, some of them are just Israelites who don't believe in the teachings that we have, so they kind of hate us more than they love the truth, best way I could say. They'll hate us, they'll hate the Israelite camps and other camps more than they can even love the truth for themselves. So they'll attack us and they'll, anybody who sits there with, on, with vocab Malone and try to come against uh, this Christian racist doctrine, right, is one of those Israelites, I'm saying if they're Israelites, they're Israelite that they don't really love the truth. They just really hate us. You know, <laughs> they might like the truth and they want the go along, get along campaign, so to speak. But we, you know, as I'm here to say that this is nothing new. You had these guys. That's why we call them John, John, Jean, John Calvin. <laughs> is how it was originally was pronounced. And um, these guys, what they managed to do. Uh, you got to remember, we was in power during that um, the time of the so-called Middle Ages. And we didn't completely lose our power, even when King James was on the scene. And they set these, uh, we had power over these uh, Idumeans. But, uh, of course, wicked as they are, you know, they wasn't for the, you know, for the law, so to speak. They were lawless. And our people, if they would have known that these people, uh, if they knew the scriptures and knew who these people were, then they wouldn't have had that chance. But the Lord allowed that. So anyway, these uh, I'll, I'll read a couple of things on here. I don't even know if I may read a scripture here or there. But I just want to read something going back. This is called the religious instruction of, of the Negroes in the United States. So what you'll do is you'll go online and it'll show a whole bunch of videos and you know this media put up what they want it'll show a whole bunch of videos and captions of how negroes converted to uh christianity um like it was a good thing and like they wasn't forced and some wasn't forced but they wasn't forced physically but it was forced you know economically right they was forced you know by family by different means they were forced into Christianity because you remember there was some whites that didn't want them as Christians because they said that they can't be civilized. They believed that we were Hamites. We were Canaanites, the curse of Ham. And they said we couldn't be converted. Well, the story, the rabbit holes goes, goes deep. Let's go to Psalms 83 and 4. Um, 83 and 2. Uh, 83 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Okay, and that was the whole key. A lot of them knew that we were Hebrews, but what happened is our people slowly but surely forced converted to Christianity. A lot of our people died saying that hell no they wasn't going to be a Christian but you know through the mothers through Christmas once you adopt Christmas and you oppress somebody so hard throughout the year and then on December 25th you give them gifts can you imagine the excitement the children have then obviously you're going to slowly convert anyway this is called the religious destruction of the Negroes in the United States I'm gonna just read a couple things out of it not very much it says these are the chapters I'm not reading the, the, the pages they got all the pages this is a pretty big book it says the objection the objections to religious instruction of Negroes and the slave states right because you had people who didn't want them to want Negroes to be Christians right that so you had some to feel that was the only way to civilize them that's why when we built those churches they would go burn them down so you had a group of white people that said we don't want them uh, to be Christians that don't it's not for them because we're the chosen people 
Remember, those those Christian nationalists, right? And then you had the so-called politicians, the other type, that said, it's business. We, they, they'll make great slaves. And then you had some that was mixed on both sides. Anyway, it says, if we suffer our Negroes <laughs> to be instructed, the tendency will be uh, to change the civil relationships of society as now constituted. The way will be open for men from abroad to enter in and inculcate doctrines subversive of our interest and safety, right? So they've seen us as a threat. The religious instruction of the Negroes will lead to neglect and duty and insubordination. Why were they saying that? Because of we wasn't with it. So they figured if they tried to indoctrinate us as we were fighting against it, okay, that there would be a lot of insubordination to be against the slave and the masters. Okay, um, the Negroes will embrace seasons of religious worship for or, originated for or, or originated and uh, executed plans of the insubordination in the villi, right? This was in published by Charles something in 18, what's his name? Thomas Purse Printer, Savannah, uh, by C.C. Jones. Um, let me say, Charles C. Jones, Savannah, published by Thomas Purse in 1842, right? So this was 1842. Obviously, I can't read the whole book. I'm just going, I'm just reading a little parts out of it. Um, there would be a better understanding of the relationship of master and servant and of their uh, reciprocal duties. So they figured they wanted to go with another approach to um, convert us over to Christianity. And this is what the vocabs in them are all about. That's why I'm reading this. They used smooth words. They took the pages out the Bible. They threw us re religion. They, um, we wanted to get close to the masters. We got benefits. So what we would do is we would join with the master and his belief. But remember, they always still read that you were still a servant under your master. And that's why they read servants obey your masters. That's why they went into those scriptures. And they used it because they knew if we could convert, and it's what God said because we was a religious people, that we would follow it. So true, the Bible was used as a tool of that. But they didn't show us the whole book and even told us we couldn't read. But they only allowed these preachers uh, or the masters to let, allow us to read those portions that we needed to so we could believe it. Right? Um, and that's why they told us, hey, you, you can't read because they didn't want us to read the book. At least the, the little bit that was in there. So they did a lot of things to us, man. And we see this as these um, Christian evangelists. They always, and when you go in more into history, they always hired other blacks to do the duties. It's in this too. I, I can't read it all, but it's in here. I read it. The what parts I read. They always hired, um, at the time, the, the, the head of the household, which was the father, um, and the mistresses of the household, once you indoctrinate them, you indoctrinate the children, and then the children will grow up indoctrinated. So this is why all these years we've been going to church on Sunday, and we've been following Jesus the Christ, because that was indoctrinated all the way back then. And now we're waking up, and now it's time to wake up out of sleep. These guys are trying to put you back to sleep. Right, and they're hiring people to do it, hirelings. Um, there would be a better understanding of the relationship of master and servant, right? Uh, religious instruction would contribute to safety. <laughs> um, they should therefore devote a portion of each Sabbath to regular preaching to the Negroes, and this when they realized once we can teach the Negroes and then we can teach the others and then teach the others. And that's when they ordained Jakes, like T.D. Jakes, 
is just an example way in the future of uh, Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, uh, Joel Olstein, and various other prominent black preachers. What well, Joel Olstein is not, but he's just another one because they still had white preachers too that was preaching the, the so-called blacks. For the ones that didn't want to listen to us, they would set them up. Anyway, um, uh, meetings with colored members and with colored children for their uh, catatechnical instruction. Um, it's all through here. I'm not going to read all this. It's, it's a lot. But you get the point. That's You can pull this up online. Um, you can pull this up online. The scripture says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, 2 Corinthians. And this is called the religious instruction of Negroes in the United States. So what they're doing is kind of going back to it. That's why they got rap parties, vocab, and those Christians. He'll get those so-called black people up there, and they'll do dances and rap and hymns. They got the, you know, you'll see on his channel, he got a rap, Christian rap and all that. He's trying to use the Pod Piper to get you back because that's what worked before. But they're going to find out that this stuff is not going to work. So I just kind of found it interesting. Well, looking at this video, this guy was kind of calling um, vocab out. Um, whatever he is, but he's calling vocab out. This white looking guy calling him out against Pastor Dow because Pastor Dow is a, a off, you know, he's off his rocker too with his doctrine. I don't even want to go into that. Anyway, that's all I have on that, Shalom.